Welcome to Yolo, Texas, and this is our team of traveling Texans. <laughs> Ride shotgun with us as we visit breathtaking views. I can't put it towards how amazing this view is. Check out heart racing attractions. <laughs> and taste mouth watering foods that only this great state has to offer. So can we dig in? My mic is seriously the happiest person ever right now. Why you ask? Well, to simply put it, you only live once, Texas. Hey y'all, welcome to Yellow Texas, the show that gives you an in-depth look at some of the coolest, most interesting spots all around the Lone Star State. I'm your host, AC, and we've got a fun episode for you today. Not only will we explore the world's largest auto auction, we're also making our way to a competition known as the most dangerous dance on dirt. But first, we know Austin is known for some of the greatest craft beer, which means that if you're thinking of opening up a brewery, you've got to have something pretty special to stand out, right? Well, our next destination is proving they've got what it takes to thrive in this tight-knit community, and it's creating quite the buzz. So are you ready to try some of the best ale in Austin? We'll tag along with our resident expert and founder of Texas Humor, J.D. Saseda. So today we're at The Yard, which is one of South Austin's newest big retail developments. Happens to be home to my office for Texas Humor, one of my favorite coffee shops, and most importantly, my favorite brewery. So why don't you come along with me, we'll grab a quick coffee, take a walk through our operations, and then we'll go grab a beer to round out the day. The Yard was formerly an industrial warehouse complex, but now features a great mix of retail offices and warehouses like ours. Almost daily, I stop in for a cold Americano to go from my friends at Spokesman. Thanks so much. So when we first moved in, we were in this facility right here, and uh, we were in about 3,200 square feet. Now we've got 8,000 here, 10,000 in the back, which is where all the Texas Humor gear is, and then a few more thousand up in the front where our offices are now located. So at least once a day, I normally go grab a coffee, try to walk through our warehouses where all the Texas Humor products ship from, so that's what you're seeing here on the shelf. But then I round out the afternoon with meetings, mostly about design, social media, and all things Texas. So this is the shirt that started it all. It's our Ain't Texas. Everybody's seen this at least once. If you haven't, then you need to go to texashumor.com and buy one. Our Texas Humor office is where we do our design, social media, and customer service work when we're not over enjoying beer at St. Elmo. Opened in 2016, St. Elmo Brewing Company is the perfect balance of fun, innovative, and delicious, offering a huge variety of unique, thought-provoking brews that'll satisfy even the pickiest of beer connoisseurs. And up first, we met with owners Tim Bullock and Brian Winslow to get the inside scoop on this one-of-a-kind brewery. I think both Brian and I really wanted a place that felt kind of like a backyard, mm -hmm. like uh, something that wouldn't be completely industrial, it seemed like you were in a fabricating place. Yeah. We wanted to be relatively comfortable, so, and that was like a focus for this whole whole scene right there. Yeah. One of the most important things that we really tried to focus on in the early times was keeping it open, which was really important for us. You know, one of our kind of mantras in creating the brewery was breaking down the barrier between the brewer and the drinker, create an open dialogue, and the only way to do that is to, is to make the brewery open. Yeah, one of my favorite aspects of the brewery is that it's kid-friendly. You guys just having the space for our kiddo to run around. I really like that. Was it important to have a yard when you guys moved in here and, and having that open space outside? Yeah, that's actually, I think that's part of what tipped the scales on this particular building right gotcha. here. Cool. Is that anytime you hang out around Austin, you know that there's, having an outdoor space is like super, super important. And yeah. that was really high on our, our want list. What was the driving force behind wanting to be in this specific area in South Austin? Well, I think the first thing is the name. I mean, St. Elmo was a town like 130 years ago. Um, it was a village of like 90 people, and then they named the street after it, and now the, kind of the whole district is named St. Elmo. So we've covered all the details. Can you guys give us a view behind the curtain and show us a little bit more about beer? Sure, let's do it. So right now we're standing and it's called the brew house. Think of brewing as kind of having two parts. There's a hot side and there's cold side. All right, we're gonna mash, mix uh, grain and hot water. Yeah. Then we're going to louder, separate okay. the grain from the water. 
Uh, and then we're gonna run all of that, um, that mash water called wort into the kettle, where we're gonna boil, sterilize it, we're gonna add hops, we're gonna add flavor and bitterness and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is go to cold side. We're gonna cool it down, and that's where, honestly, like we're like, I think like the magic happens. And that's where you give it to yeast, and yeast is gonna start to create more flavors and turn all that sugar water that we made into alcohol and CO2. There is no time like fermentation time. All these beers are only available here. And one of the things that we focus on at St. Elmo is the concept of fresh beer, just like yeah. produce. It is best here. And so all this beer travels from where we were in the brew house through the cellar to the tap wall. It's about 50 feet from where it started and to where you're drinking it. So and we're, yeah, we're really proud of that. I, I feel like this is asking someone who their favorite kid is, but do you have a favorite beer that you guys brew? I mean, I, I love them all in different ways, but I, I drink the most call. Yeah, absolutely. Call. He's easy drinking. It's 4.6%. It's filtered um, and, and also has you know plenty of his own character. If chemistry class had been anything like this in high school, I would have definitely had an A. It's so amazing that you can take so few ingredients and so few processes and end up with so many different types of beer. It's pretty cool. I really appreciate you walking me through, checking out the, the brewing process, but most importantly, we're gonna get to the beer. So this is uh, Karl Kolsch. It's a traditional uh, German style ale. It's not quite a lager, not quite an ale. It's yeah. kind of its own thing, and it really, really works well for hot Texas summers, which of course we get nine months out of the year. Yeah, this is my favorite. It's, it's really crisp and, and fresh and, yeah. and light, and uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't feel like I'm drinking lunch with right. it. Yeah, beer's not anything if not really fun, and we always try to include a little bit of humor in everything that we do. Yeah, and so this one is named kind of in honor of. Uh, Amber, which is a 311 song, right. so that's the reason why the beer is named that way. We decided to make this one, which is kind of like pow cut in half. Okay. So half of a pow is a pew pew. Yeah. And so <laughs> that's what that one is. Okay, so on to the steak beer. Yeah, uh, the Angus. The steak beer. Uh, all we right. want to have chocolate cake. This is what we'll have it with. So in addition to some amazing beer, St. Elmo Brewing Company is also home to some amazing food options, thanks to the folks in the Soursop food truck that's right over here. Smell great. Mm. If you ever find yourself on the south side of Austin, Texas, make sure that you stop by San Elmo Brewing Co. and enjoy yourself like I am. Adios, y'all. Want to check out St. Elmo Brewery Company for yourself? Just visit the link below to learn more. Stick around because up next, we're speeding through the world's biggest car auction. You got to see it for yourself. Hey y'all, welcome back to the show. So if you couldn't tell, we here at Yellow Texas have a little soft spot for the classics. Classic movies, classic tunes, and of course, classic cars. So when we heard that the world's largest collector car auction was returning back to Houston, you know we had to make a pit stop. So buckle up and enjoy the ride at the 2019 Mecham Auctions. Okay, so car enthusiasts go crazy for events like this and coming back by popular demand is the annual Mecham Auctions happening right here at NRG Center. We're excited, so let's take a look around. How did it all get started and how long has it been going on? Well, Mecham Auctions started 30 years ago. Uh, Dana and Patty Mecham started it in the kitchen in a, in a small home in Marengo, Illinois, which is a very small town in Illinois. Yeah. And this entire auction traveled in one white van and a U-Haul trailer. Oh. <laughs> Today, we have 250 employees that do nothing but travel with the auction and we travel in 13 semis. Texas is the only place we come twice a year. Okay. So we do a spring event in Houston yeah. and we do a fall event in Dallas. This is our eighth year in Houston and the event just continues to grow. So let's break it down. How does it all work? Who can bring in cars and who can bid on yeah. those? So all of the cars that are here at this auction, and we have almost 1,100 cars here that will cross the block over the next three days, they're all on consignment. So we, Meekum, don't own these cars. These are people from around Texas who have just decided that they've had a, a car that they've loved for however long and yeah. it's time to maybe do something new. What is the experience like for someone just walking through those doors? Yeah. 
Well, first it's important to understand that probably 90% of the people that come to Amicum Auctions uh -huh. are not wearing a bidder badge. They didn't come to sell a car or buy a car. Right. They came because it's a beautiful car show. Yeah. There are 1,100 beautiful cars here. We're a family-owned company, right. so we love to see families come, mom and dad bring the kids out. Uh, Dodge, one of our best sponsor partners, has brought a couple of simulators, the Demon simulators, 840 horsepower, oh, that are really fun to take a ride in. And better than that, out front, they've brought six Hellcat Chargers and Challengers. So those are 710 horsepower cars. They have professional race car drivers in them, and you get to get in the passenger seat, and they take you on a little race course that they've set up outside in the parking lot, free oh, of fun. charge. So Very fun. There's a lot of things to do here, see beautiful cars, see the spectacle that is Mecham Auctions, but then participate in some of the other opportunities as well. Hey, this is Yellow Texas, and we're about to head into the auction room where we're going to try to bid on a car for $10 because that's all I have in my pocket, but it's probably going to be sold for $200 million. Everything's happening so quickly. Now we're Lucky winners, and I what exactly are you going away with? I'm going away with a Trans Am. All right, yes. and so what are the details? Give us the works. So my mom had a 79 Trans Am. I'm a Trans Am guy. What is the energy like out there when you're bidding on something? Oh, it's, I, I mean, you're pumped up. I mean, it's, it's fast, it's furious. It's a lot of fun. It's a great deal. All right, let's go. Woo! Three, two, one. All right, so we're taking the fun outside because not only does Dodge have that car simulator, there's actually some fun outdoors with a different experience, and we're gonna check it out, of course. Let's go. So if it excites you and scares you at the same time, you should probably do it, right? Right. All right, let's do this. I think he actually went a little too slow for me. Right? <laughs> If you're a car enthusiast, you have to put Megum Auctions on your list of things to do because it happens twice a year right here in Texas and it's only getting bigger and better time after time. See when this classic event is making its way back to Texas by visiting Meekum.com for updates and more information. Stay right where you are because after the break, we are getting way too up close and personal with some of the toughest animals in rodeo. You don't want to miss it. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. So nothing captures the unique Lone Star State than a good old fashioned rodeo. The crowds, the excitement, the cowboys, it's all a wild ride that every true Texan should experience at least once in their lifetime, right? Well, our next destination offers all of that and a whole lot more by taking this great American pastime to an entirely new level. So break out your studs in and dust off your boots because we're on our way to Uvalde for the one and only Cactus Jack bull riding competition. This is Uvalde, known as the honey capital of the world, nicknamed the city of trees and home of former Vice President John Nance Garner and the Cactus Jack PBR bull riding competition. 
Which brings us here. You know we've seen pro bull riding on TV and at the rodeo, but this time we're getting up close and personal with the bull riders themselves and with the folks that put on the show. Let's go. And to begin with, we spoke with Mayor Don McLaughlin to find out a deeper meeting about this exciting event. The Cake Shack Foundation started about seven years ago, and then when we talked about different things, we didn't want to do it for profit, we wanted to do it for our community. And so the way we did it, we, we went to the schools and said, we want to throw this event and we want to take that money and we want to help the students and the teachers for some of the supplies that the schools won't buy for them or different things. So I mean, it, it's been a real, it's been a real inspiration for us. It takes a community to do what we've been able to do and the, and the community has really embraced it. So it's, it's really been good. And it's a great place to be. Great place to be. Uvalde's a great place to be. <laughs> I mean, you know, Hondo may have, it's only God's country. Please don't drive through it like hell, but <laughs> God, God, God just loves Uvalde. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it takes the community's involvement to do all that. And that's what makes it so special That's what too. makes it so, so special. So after a short ride and a warm welcome, we met up with the other much bigger athletes of the competition. YOLO! You only live once, right? Okay, y'all, you know we're always bringing you the latest and greatest from the Lone Star State. So when we heard that the pop culture event Celebrity Fan Fest was coming back to San Antonio with even more celebrities in entertainment, you know we're checking it out. Celebrity Fan Fest is San Antonio's premier comic convention and it's coming back the weekend of June 14th through the 16th at the Freeman Coliseum and Expo Halls. Get ready because not only will two-time Academy Award nominee Jeremy Renner be there, but also Vision himself, Paul Bettany, and WWE superstars Becky Lynch and Daniel Bryan have been added to the guest list. Plus, returning by popular demand, Celebrity Fan Fest favorite Jason Momoa, except this time Aquaman is bringing some of his fellow co-stars, including Amber Heard. New to the lineup, fresh off his recent role in Once Upon a Deadpool, most notably known as the star of the Wonder Years, Fred Savage will join the growing list of celebrities. More star appearances will be announced in the upcoming days and weeks, and Yellow Texas is giving you a chance to experience all of the action. Yes, that's right, we are giving away a pair of three-day VIP passes, plus a photo op with one of these celebrities. All you have to do is like both YOLO Texas and Celebrity Fan Fest on Facebook, tag a friend, and share the post. That's it. So what are you waiting for? Grab your tickets right now at CelebrityFanFest.com. Again, that's CelebrityFanFest.com, and we cannot wait to see you out there. When we come back, the competition bucks up at the Cactus Jack Bull Riding, so stick around. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where we are in front of Uvalde County Fairplex, where in just a few hours, some of the most die-hard rodeo fans are about to come here, hooting and hollering, waiting to experience some of the best bull riding and fighting in the entire country. I'm excited, you're excited, so let's go inside and check it out. Referred to as the most dangerous dance on dirt, Cactus Jack Bull Riding is a three-day event where world-famous cowboys vie for a chance to add to their season totals and move up in world rankings. And the best part? It's all for a good cause with every dollar going toward empowering local youth. Just ask Rodeo Hall of Famer Leon Coffey. So let's talk about these pants. There's something special about them. So who made them and why are you wearing them? <laughs> There's not a lot of stars or, or anybody or any kind of celebrities that come down and visit uh, these schools or anything. So these kids really think a lot of me down here. And yeah. Rob's school has made me a pair of pants <laughs> every year for about, about four years now. Wow. So I wear them everywhere in the United States. But it gives these kids something that they don't get all the time right. and for me to wear it it's a great honor for me to wear it for them yeah so that's yeah. why i do it and i love that uh this sport does so much for the community and i love that you get to travel with it and show yeah. the world uvalde texas uvalde texas awesome. you know <laughs> not many people can do that yeah. so I, I, i'm i'm privileged <laughs> And in true rodeo fashion, the night was packed with tons of entertainment. But one sport you may not see very often, how about American freestyle bullfighting? 
Well, American freestyle bullfighting is a competition between one man and one animal. Uh, these are the same type of fighting bulls that they use in Spain or Mexico. Uh, here in the United States, it's a complete bloodless sport. It's going to be 45 seconds of jam-packed action, you know, uh, a lot of danger, uh, a lot of intensity. It's going to be the most intense 45 seconds you ever witnessed. And intense it was. Every moment of this competition kept me and everyone around me on the edge of our seats. And then it was time for the final rides of the night. From the heart stopping to the heroic, my favorite part had to be witnessing the best of the best in the Cactus Jack title. Alrighty, so three days of competition came down to this close one, but you won it all. How does this feel for you? Oh, this feels awesome. This is a great event, and it goes towards a great cause, and I'm just happy to be here and help support that cause. And Get the win is just a icing on the cake, I guess. What goes through your mind when you're eye to eye with the bull and it's coming straight at you? I tell you what, there's probably not a guy here that was more scared than me. And I tell every guy back behind the suits, everybody that's competing, and they know I'm the one that's scared the most. And I just give it all to God and just jump and run fast and <laughs> hopefully he don't hit me. Hey guys, you're champion for tonight. So today was absolutely amazing we got a behind the scenes looks at this incredible sport we got to talk to some of the best athletes and we got front row seat to one of the most exhilarating shows i've ever been to i want to say thank you to cactus jack foundation for letting us come out here we had an absolute time of our lives interested in learning about the cactus jack foundation and about all the other events going on in uvaldi visit the links below to learn more all right, that is all the time we have here today on Yellow Texas. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, it's a big world, so get out and explore it. You know what they say, you only live once, Texas. We'll see y'all next time.